Then is Kostas Kenderis uh, from Southampton. He just wrote uh, the title on the board. <laughs> Okay, first I'd like to thank uh, the organizers for organizing this wonderful workshop. It's nice to be here in Sao Paulo and uh, interact with all of you. Uh, <coughs> I also like to thank them for the opportunity to, uh, to give a talk. So what I will discuss today is about uh, work to appear with Lelo Marotta and Minu J. Verma. Minu J. is, is a postdoc uh, and he would be in the market. Um, but before I do that, I'd like to start with uh, some general introduction. I think most of the talk would probably be the introduction before I go into this. So the, the, the name of the workshop is Holography 25. I would like actually would like to change this Holography at 30. This is the 30th year anniversary of Tufts paper, which first uh, proposed Holography. And I'll, st I'll also start by giving a definition of holography. So quantum gravity in d plus one dimensions. This should be equivalent to kind of field theory with no gravity in d dimensions. And of course, for the uh, first few years, uh, this proposal was very mysterious because it was not clear how you can make sense of what looked like a more complicated theory with something which is simpler and better understood. Till we got to uh, kind of ADS CFT, which was roughly. 25 years ago, and um, in this context, it became qu quite clear how the two would work, and I'm going to sketch it a little bit because it would appear later on. So here, I sketch ADS, Euclidean ADS, but the same picture also holds in the Laurentian, so this is, this is the boundary of ADS. and. In this space-time, what are different morphism invariant observables are so-called ADS amplitudes. And those are obtained by choosing some points the boundary. And then we have some bulk theory. And then we kind of connect this, so we have, so let's call x1, x2, x3, Xn. So I have bulk to boundary propagators that brings this point to the interior. And in the interior, in general, we have some interactions. And these interactions can be constructed again by using now new propagators. So let's say this is, the, the, this is our diagram, one example of a diagram. So here, these inner lines are the bulk to bulk propagators. And then this object here is exactly the same as the CFT endpoint function of corresponding operators in the dual CFT. So this is the same object computes this on the CFT. Actually, let me put some indices because in general, these are spinning operators. And uh, again, because I'm going to use it again later on, I can Fourier transform over the boundary directions. And then this object, which now I'm going to denote it generically with, so this is the amplitude of the endpoint function. It would depend on k momenta. And because we have translational invariance in the boundary, we have a delta function for the conservation of momentum. And then we have some uh, kind of reduced amplitude where one of the momenta is equal to the sum of the rest. Okay, 
Now, this was when this was introduced quite quickly, it was realized this is an example of holography. This was in Witten's paper in 98. And for a very long time, people tried to see, is this an example or can we generalize it? So I would like to argue that uh, ADS-CFT is the analog of the harmonic oscillator. for holography. In other words, like the harmonic, if you do a quantum field theory, you can think of it as infinite collection of harmonic oscillators. And of course, you can build and, 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 and develop on this. And there are issues when you try to, try to put everything together. But I would try to argue that similarly, if you try to do general holography, at least in all examples that we understand currently, that seems, to, that seems to halt. So let me go, go through a couple of, of examples. Actually, you've seen them already in the lectures. Um, so one example is to consider, so this, 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 this appeared uh, yesterday in Juan's talk. So if you have the kind of non conformer brains, so this is the case where now the geometry Instead of being ADS-like, they're more like power-like, with n greater than 1. And um, as was described also yesterday by Juan, he can obtain this by starting from ADS in d1 plus theta, where this you view as a torus. And then you view that as a parameter, which you continue. And then this allows you to use all of the things we learn here to obtain the duality for this type of theories. Well, now this is a kind of field theory with a dimensionful coupling constant. And I would say this kind of holographies are pretty much almost at the same level as understanding as, as this ones. And again, all the formulas follow from ADS. Now, a second example is also the one that mentioned by Juan in his uh, last lecture in the school. Yes. Uh, I don't think that's true. I think it's, uh, <clears throat> again, the, the, uh, the, the observables here. So if, if I write a typical observable, so this theory has, again, a scaling. So then you can have, let's say I have a two-point function. So um, if, it was, if this would be a CFT, this would be the answer. In this type of theories, you can show in general that the answer is the CFT behavior times a function. This is a function of the effective dimensionless quantity. So I told you that uh, this has a dimensionful coupling constant. And then I can use the power of x to form a dimensionless combination. And then uh, the general answer would be of that form. And then uh, the kind of three level, at, at strong coupling, this is going to have strong coupling expansion. At weak coupling, you find this with the weak coupling expansion. 
in between you expect to have an extrapolation. I see no reason why this formula will not halt in sublating orders in one over n. Um, most of the evidence, like you know, with the standard ADS CFT, is uh, is most of them are done in the linear order in the large n. Um, at, at the same level, in sense, if if I see this is what I can compute here, I have exactly the same list I can compute on that side as well. Yeah, this is more an example. I'm not going to discuss it any, any, any further. I think this is going to affect that function. I don't think it's going to affect uh, anything else. Um, it's, um, it is true that uh, these this theories with a dimension for coupling constant are valid in specific energy range. And uh, you have to go outside that range. Like, for instance, if you look at the two brains, there is, uh, you know, if you go to large and limit, there is a region where the due to description doesn't hold, and then you go to M theory, but then you get into ADS4 regime. So uh, when you go outside this, it would be a more standard fixed point, which again would be described by ADS. You have to combine this with that. So the G effective, so in, in, in the Toft limit, uh, usually one considers this in the Toft limit, uh, where one has also a factor of n over there. Well, I do not see a reason that uh, this story is not going to hold. It's, the, the one is going to be, uh, most of the theories that enter in the holography, they have a large n limit and a Toft limit. And then I'm considering this within that 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 that, that regime. Yeah. So, so lambda, the parameter lambda, is related to the fact that uh, this theory has a dimension for coupling constant, and then uh, the theory, the bulk theory, always has also a scalar field which is dual to that parameter. And uh, and and then you, again you have it corresponds to uh, doing loop, loops in the bulk. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, so the second example is if you're looking either at the sitter or um, power law inflation. So in that case, this is the boundary becomes uh, uh, future infinity, and then in this case you have cosmological correlators. And this in, in correlators, which is this is the imprint at the late time, so this is kind of the Penrose diagram of the sitter. So then you get those from the same data we have here. Upon doing analytic continuation. Where you take the magnitude of the momentum and you analytically continue them to the negative uh, real axis, and you take the rank of the gauge group, if this was, let's say, as you end theory, you take to minus n squared. And this reproduces standard results for inflation. So in this case also, so you can get to this by just starting from that and doing something to this, to this amplitudes. So, what I want to describe today is how to do, to go to this last case, uh, which is uh, flat space. So in a sense, we have, here we have ADS, there we have the sitter. This is cases where uh, it, it's kind of power law, and now we'll discuss flat space. So 
in flat space, what we're interested in is, are, is uh, uh, scattering uh, processes. So this is something like we have some massive particles starting from here, and then this can interact with massless. And then, again, there can be some interaction here, and this goes to infinity, and then there might be some radiation going at infinity. And if I have time, the thing I would like to discuss in detail is the following case. But we have, you prepare a massive state at past infinity. So this is going to depend on momentum, the spin, and some helicity. And then at some point, it emits some radiation and then goes to infinity. So that would be a state, again, with some momentum, some spin, and some helicity. And uh, what we like, for instance, to compute is to, to, comp to understand the structure of that state by observing the radiation at infinity. So this would be obtained by computing The, the expectation value of the current at infinity sandwiched between the initial and the final state. So this is a computation that goes back to uh, maybe 50, 60 years. I mean, people in the beginning of the 50s would try to understand, let's say, the structure of uh, the uh, neutron or uh, the, the, the structure of, of, of nuclei by observing the, the radiation. So these are uh, kind of electromagnetic form factors. And uh, again, if I have time at, at the end, I will describe this in more detail. So what I would like to do is I would like to compute all of these processes by taking a limit of this guy. Okay, so um, that's how we'll give you the, the prescription, and then uh, we'll discuss a little bit some of the, de some of the details. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, so what in, we're interested in scattering um, where the flat space Lagrangian is some function of the masses and the coupling constants. And then we can use the standard one of two, three, one, and one to compute the scattering amplitude. So the first step is to just take the same Lagrangian, but now in ADS. Where lambda is... Uh, the, the curvature and uh, depends on the ADS scale in, uh, in, in, the, in this fashion. So now we can compute in ADS, like here. And then we want to understand how to take the flat space limit. Well, if I only want to discuss the scattering of, uh, that does not involve gravitons, then uh, I would take it at a fixed background. If I want to discuss scattering of gravitons, then I will also include the fluctuations of the graviton. But I mean, this doesn't, you know, this, this cell could have included R. So I could also discuss, let's say, scattering of gravitons in flat space and then try to get the answer by, from ADS. D plus one is the same, yeah. So this is D plus one. Uh, so flat space limit means I want to take the ADS radius to infinity, keeping fixed 
all the parameters that appear here. So M and GI. Yes. 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 Well, I, I think uh, I, I will use the convention that all momenta are incoming. And then uh, at the end, I will, I, will, I will decide which ones I want to consider as, as uh, outgoing, you know, so the final state, which, which ones are ingoing. Um, I think in practice, there's no, there's no real issue. Um, OK, so. <coughs> So in doing this, one there is one issue. So one has to, in a sense, make sure that the parameters are kept fixed. But we know that um, from the basic ADS-CFT dictionary that uh, m square in the units of ADS scale depends on the formal dimension roughly in the following way. So we have the conformal dimension, and this is the spin of the state. So this means that as I, as I take L to infinity, if I want to fix and fixed, I also need to take delta to infinity. Okay, so um, now I, okay, I think so. Now we have starting from that from that action. Uh, it's, 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 yeah, so it should be delta minus D, yes, yes, yeah. So they both got to plus infinity. Um, so now I want to understand how that limit affects the various pieces that end here. And eventually I also want, so even though I will start by studying this, Ultimately, I want to be able to directly do it here, because then we'll have no reference in between that I want through ADS. It will be directly a direct derivation of the scattering amplitudes of this theory by doing something in the CFT correlators over there, in a similar way that here I can have Indian correlators in cosmology by doing something directly on the CFT correlators without having to go through the bulk. Okay, so now um, to do this, I have to tell you a little bit about how to go from ADS to Minkowski. And then once we understood this, we can go back to this diagram and see what happens to the various pieces here. So. Uh, I can write the ADS metric in the following way, where Z is the um, radial coordinate. And then I define Z to be L e to the tau over L. So taking L to infinity means Z go to infinity. So this means we're focusing on the center of ADS. And I mean, this has been discussed since the beginning days of ADS-CFT. This is why you expect, in a sense, to, to, to be insensitive to the boundary conditions you impose at infinity. Uh, so now in this limit, well, I wrote Minkowski, but I'm going to end up in, since I have, I have weak rotated this, I'm going to end up with just flat space. So I, I can further weak rotate this down the line. So then this becomes this in this limit. And then one can also check that um, the ADS isometries correctly limit to uh, 
what you would expect for flat space, kind of Poincaré. It doesn't happen, and it happens in a slightly in a trivial fashion. Uh, I'm just going to give you one example. The paper is going to contain all of them. I mean, for instance, the, the scaling transformation in ADS give rise to uh, translations in the tau variable. Um, so scaling in ADS has, is this, and you can see also by, by inspection that this leaves this metric invariant. Um, but then we want to take L to infinity. Uh, so now from here, we find that uh, delta tau is lambda times L. We want to take L to infinity. This means we need to take lambda to zero with uh, this keeping fixed. So then in this com combined limit, the spatial coordinates are invariant, and delta tau is just shifted. And there's similar things happens with the spatial conformal transformations are also uh, combined with other ones to give uh, kind of rotations. 10 minutes, OK. Um, yeah, probably we're not going to go to the example. But um, OK, so now we know how to go from one to the other. So now let's discuss a bit the various pieces that end here. So we have the bulk to boundary propagator K. So this behaves like in, after we transform to momentum space. So this depending on momentum. What did I call it? The Merakiaropi. Okay. So this is for scalars, but uh, all the other ones, if you have a spinning, they have similar form constructed from similar pieces. So we see from here, so we want to take the limit delta to infinity and L to infinity. And you see that Z from here had the factor of L. So this means that the relevant, mini, the relevant limit, so you want to understand the limit and go to infinity where both the index of the Bessel and the arguments go to infinity. Okay, that's a limit which usually you don't find in books. You find in specialized books in papers. Uh, but one can work it out. And the answer is kind of the following. Uh, one quarter. And this is, um, again, a slightly complicated function. So now, with this limit, so now let's go back to uh, discuss how when we compute this, this correlator. Actually, before I do this, so this is for back to boundary propagators. So the back to bulk in this limit, they just give correctly flat space propagators. So now when I, so I want to compare kind of these guys with a flat, they take the flat space limit of those. So if we have um,
Well, I, I think this is a general story. I don't think this general story was done in the past, as far as I know. People have done massless case, going back to 10, 12 years ago. Um, but the massive case, there are maybe one or two papers, but uh, I don't think it's, um, there's a full discussion. Even the simplest case that the, of, of the three-point function, I don't think has been done for, for massive spinning states. And massive, and massive. Okay, so if you have d-dimensional CFT, then uh, the case, are, the, the, these are off-shell. If you have uh, d plus one dimensional scattering amplitudes, because the external legs are on-shell, so here, from the momenta in the boundary directions, one needs to go into uh, to add one more component because we go one dimension higher. So the momenta are the same, and here we just use just complete this by requiring this this p plus one dimensional vector to be uh, be correctly kind of on shell. So now we have the amplitudes. This guy's here. That depending on the three-dimensional vectors, and we want, as we take the limit to infinity, this should become scattering amplitudes. So this means we need four-dimensional energy momentum conservation. So of course, these guys, as I wrote here, they already have. momentum conservation. So this means that as we take this limit, this guy here should be proportional to uh, a delta function. And that indeed happens by using this, this kind of, um, this asymptotic formula. So then, uh, And then let you put a double hat. And then the claim is that this object here correctly reproduces the scattering amplitudes. Now, precisely because the bulk to bulk propagators map to flat space propagators, this means that, and we keep fixed all the other couplings. So this means this diagram becomes exactly the same as the flat space diagrams. And the external legs, the role that they play is to just give rise to this uh, energy momentum delta function. So almost by construction, this is guaranteed that this is gonna this is gonna work. And uh, so what? Uh, when I don't I don't have time to to discuss this. What we do in detail is discuss this in the simplest possible case, which was the the, the case of the electromagnetic form factors. So at three level, you can compute this diagram where you have uh, some uh, spin S state, and then you have some electromagnetic current going out. So this has, uh, <coughs> the structure of this is dictated by Lorentz invariance in terms of form factors, which you can compute at three level. And then we did the same computation from, from ADS and uh, again, all of these factors come together, and then uh, this 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 this, this three-point function exactly reproduces what you would expect from uh, from flat space. Okay, how much time do I have? Zero. 
Uh, no, I think in two minutes. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I don't think I can start a new example in two minutes. So maybe it's a good time to uh, uh, have get questions. Thank you, Costas. Any questions? Okay. So, um, Costas, how exactly do you take the limit? Uh, because deltas are right in your hands, but uh, Zs are uh, <coughs> integration variables in the diagram. So well, essentially, if you go to momentum space, what you need to do is you, you, you go to the limit where the k's are very large. So you scale k and then take the limit of, of uh, going to infinity. Because here, what happens in practice <coughs> is these factors of L appear next to momenta, and then uh, that, that's how you scale. You, you, uh, I mean, what you are scaling is, so the, the, in, in ADS, we're at expressions in ADS units. And then, uh, <coughs> of course, these are just units. I can write them in other units and then take the limit to infinity to focus on the high energy limit of, of the amplitude. So, uh, that integration automatically in this limit uh, picks, picks more yes. contribution from the center of ideas? Uh, yes, yeah. If, if, if you take, if, if you zoom, if you zoom in the last, in, 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 in the high energy limit in, in the momenta, this automatically uh, Picks and says the center of ADS. Let me make one comment that, for example, there was this nice paper by Komatsu and Balt and so on recently where they precisely explained that it's a bit dangerous, it depends on the kinematics of the external points. Sometimes that happens, sometimes they do meet in the middle of ADS, but sometimes it doesn't. It's not up to, right? Because the points could decide, imagine you have a four point function, they could decide to merge very close to the boundary, propagate, and then annihilate again, right? It's not guaranteed that it happens close to ADS. It <coughs> depends on the kinematics of the external point. And sometimes it does, sometimes it does no, not. I mean, I, 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 I know Bolt's paper, and of course they made the same point. Uh, actually, we took it from, from that paper that you need to take delta to infinity as you take L to infinity. But from the perspective of the CFT, I don't have to think about ADS. I only have to think about how to, uh, how to scale the, uh, the variables on the CFT. There is, there's nothing... No, it's not about the delta. It's about the kinematics of the external points that would correspond to the kinematics of the scattering amplitude in the bulk. For some external momenta that you scatter, indeed, what happens is going to happen very, clo very close to the center of ADS. But if you continue to other momenta, sometimes it doesn't. So what they say is that you should compute in some region where it happens close to ADS, and then analytically continue from there. So it's not that... Uh, you are guaranteed that the interactions happen in the bulk of ADS in the middle. <coughs> but I mean, again, I don't have to use the ADS. I mean, I use the ADS to, to justify the prescription. I, cannot, I can directly stay here on the CFT side and then consider the limit of these amplitudes. Because some of, them, <coughs> some of the amplitudes may go to zero, may not continue to, to have a, a flat space limit in that limit. But the ones that will have a limit, they would be scattering amplitudes in flat space. I mean, you want a phrase in the sense, what do you do in ADS? How, how do you arrange so that when you start from ADS, I mean, this was, in a sense, the big stumbling block from the beginning. Like, you know, when Puczynski and, and Saskin discussed the flat space limit, it was not clear how to adjust the <coughs> initial conditions from ADS so that the scattering is going to happen. And actually, the answer to that question is, it's not possible. This, when you take the limit naively, then you get... Uh, the, you find that the amplitudes do not have a limit, so you have to analytically continue the momenta to get to get to a limit. Like this, this, this momentum preserving delta function. So this is the sum of positive quantities. So if I require, then I have the sum of positive quantities equal to zero. This means each of the quantities have to be equal to zero, and therefore <coughs> there's just not scattering. But if I analytically continue, there is always <coughs> an analytic continuation where you now view this as, as a, this are unconstrained variables, and that's where you get the, uh, the flat space scattering. I think the geometric picture was the one which was misleading, not, not the original idea. 
Any other question? Yes. Yeah, So the Lorentz invariance, the 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 the, <coughs> the uh, d plus one dimensional Lorentz invariance, comes from the ADS isometries, and I only show you one piece. I show you how uh, time translations appear, and the other transformations appear as a combination of spatial conformal transformations, and, uh, and 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 some of the other transformations. And we, we will discuss this in the paper. It is automatic. It is automatic. <clears throat> so I start from a CFT that has conformal transformations, and then when I take the limit I, I discuss, the conformal transformations become Lorentz transformations in one dimension higher. But that happens automatically. Yeah, I think uh, here I, I put indices to indicate that this is a generic uh, operator. It can be scalars, metrics. Uh, I think all cases are included. Um, the case we will discuss in detail was, uh, you know, mass spinning S with, uh, with electromagnetic current and get the electromagnetic uh, form factors. But the discussion is, is general. Um, <clears throat> so I started saying ADS-CFT is the harmonic oscillator, and in this context, the, the CFT is the same CFT we had in ADS, but is specific limit and analytic continuation thereof. You do not need the new theory. You just get it from uh, the original CFT. Um. Let's take uh, ABHM and uh, ADS-4. Okay, so now uh, <coughs> so now you can compute. So of course, uh, ABHM is, is is dual to specific four-dimensional uh, gravity theory. Now, if I want the scattering amplitudes for for the same Lagrangian, I can just use ABHM to, for, for 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 that purpose. So if I just speak, so here the, the prescription, you tell me which scattering amplitude I want to compute, okay? So now I take that Lagrangian and I add it to ADS. Okay, now that's, in a sense, more a bottom-up approach. So then you can say you do not holography with those. Now if you want a top-down model with those, you can ask which top-down models contains this specific Lagrangian. So if you have one of those, then the CFT I would use would be the CFT dual to that top-down model. If I don't have explicitly any of those, okay, it is a, it, it, it a bottom-up approach. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, maybe this is a similar sort of question. So. If in the bulk the, the symmetry is that of the, now the Poincaré group, if I understand? In the limit, yes. So limit. you start from ADS, you yeah. take the limit, that reduces ADS to flat but, space. But how can you interpret that as a, as a con sort of conformal group of, of, for the boundary theory? I mean, there is the usual, uh, I mean, all of this follows from the usual contraction of ADS to Poincaré, and then you can explicitly express those in terms of variation. So the variations, the ADS isometries, become exactly the usual Poincaré ones. Yeah, but uh, uh, maybe I don't remember, but I don't think that the Poincaré group can be interpreted as a conformal group. It's a contraction. It is, it's a contraction. It's a contraction of uh, the thing. Yeah, that's by, by construction, the contraction, but I mean... But then I have explicitly, I, I show you explicitly how the, the translations in Tau, in, in, in tau up, uh, appear. And we also have a similar discussion how all rotations and boosts appear in the limit. So you can just start from the usual ADS transformations, and then there are specific combinations that are going to give you the standard Poincaré transformations 
as we all know them. But, but the boundary theory is not anymore a conformal field theory then? That's the well, the boundary theory is a limit of a conformal field theory. Which is not conformal. Well, uh, I mean, I take a limit. Yeah, so it's not, uh, it's not a conformal field theory. It's a sector of, uh, of the conformal field theory. Uh, it's, or more properly, it's an anal analytic continuation of a sector of the conformal field theory. Okay. But you can get, in a sense, it's, it's, it's many to one, so you take a limit. So if I start from flat space, so that's a specific sector of a CFT. I cannot, in a sense, obtain all of the CFT. But if I start from the CFT, I can obtain any scattering amplitude I'm interested in. But let me say, for example, in the case of the non-relativistic uh, discussion that, that there was a talk about, then we know that there are systems in nature that you can engineer, etc., that they have this particular uh, symmetry, the Schrodinger symmetry or whatever. Yes. Uh, do we know of examples of systems which have this particular symmetry? I mean, I'm not looking at any, any strange symmetry. This is the standard Poincaré symmetry, flat space. Uh, so, a, a, a standard model, take the standard model. Well, okay, maybe, maybe you can continue after lunch. <coughs> take the standard model, and can, you can do the same thing with the standard model. Suppose you're interested in, uh, let's say, scanning amplitudes of Higgs. <coughs> Actually, the example that we, we are doing, you can think of, uh, let's say, W bosons, give rise to uh, it, it become a photon, photon the three <coughs> the, the couplings between a photon and the w boson okay now you can uh, this is a specific three point function people measure in the lab so now you go and put that specific lagrangian and actually it is the, the one that we are using put in an ads compute the ads diagram take the limit you recover the, the, uh, the, the standard answer that, that you get by quantum field theory 101. Yes, what I don't see is the interpretation as a d minus one dimensional field theory and the boundary. Because the answer that I get is from a three dimensional CFT in a, by a specific limit. Well, for the theories that are in a sense top down, then I will have an independent CFT. So if I start with bottom up, it's like with all bottom up holography discussions. In a bottom up, you do not automatically know exactly what are the details of the CFT. Yeah. I mean, it is in a sense CFT, at the same time, it's still CFT data. Start from a CFT, from uh, some correlators. Yeah. 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 yeah, so if, if it is bottom up, in a sense, holography, you don't know exactly which theory it is, but it's still a CFT correlator. Yeah. yeah. No, but I mean, this specific case, I can start, this is a specific diagram in a specific theory. So that diagram here, huh? So for this, for this case, it's actually three-point functions are universal. So I don't know, in a sense, the, and then I can, in a sense, f fix the, f the, the features of the CFT to uh, control the parameters that, that appear here. So I have exactly the same parameters. So this is parameterized by you know, the charge, the magnetic moment, and if it is spin one, then the quadruple. So there are three parameters. Then the CFT correlate contains exactly three parameters. Uh, and you can map them exactly one to one. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's similar. In the sense, you start if you if if you know in a sense ADS CFT is the seat for all the other ones. Uh, in some cases, there would be top-down models in string theory, and in others not. Uh, 
And okay, maybe some of them would be, in a sense, in the swap land. Let's suppose you do a bootstrap, and you say the CFT I'm using doesn't satisfy the bootstrap constraints. Then I would say the bulk action that I started belongs to the swamp land. It's not, it's not a correct, effective field theory. OK, I think it's time to thank Kostas again. <laughs> <laughs>